Good evening, everyone. My name is Cindy Greathouse, and I'm here to speak to, with you tonight about uh, teacher tenure versus the uh, thought of merit pay. Uh, tenure was originally seen at the university level. Uh, many professors would work for years publishing pieces of inspired academic work uh, before being awarded what amounted to a job for life. Tenure, as we know it today, is the practice of guaranteeing a teacher their job. Originally, this was a due process guarantee, something intended to work as a check against administrators who were erratically firing teachers and replacing them with friends or family members. Additionally, it was designed to protect any teacher who took a political stand that the community didn't agree with. Merit pay, on the other hand, is a pay scale for people in the teaching profession that is based on performance rather than tenure. School districts using a merit pay plan typically create a system for evaluating teacher performance. They examine the teachers in their district regularly to see how they are performing. Any teacher who, routine, who routinely performs above standard may be offered higher pay for his or her work, as will teachers who pursue professional growth, while other teachers are kept at the regular pay standard. Now, depending on how the system is applied, it may allow teachers to progress more quickly through the various pay grades, or it may put teachers on different salary tracks. Tenure, on the other hand, would increase a teacher's pay simply based on the amount of time they have been teaching, regardless of how good or how bad they are, even if their classes test poorly on the state-required standardized test. According to the documentary Waiting for Superman, one out of every 57 doctors loses his or her license to practice medicine. One out of 97 lawyers lose their license to practice law. Yet, only one out of every 1,000 teachers is ever fired for performance-related issues. In New York City alone, between 2007 and 2010, 88 out of 80,000 city school teachers have lost their job for poor performance. The way tenure has been used recently, it has evolved from the original understanding of due process to the university-style job for life. Most states allow a teacher to receive tenure after simply two years. Then, if there's an issue and they need to get rid of this teacher, the hearing process could last upwards of 502 days and cost as much as $220,000. Although most teachers deserve to keep their jobs, we all know there are those who shouldn't even be working at the local gas station. With many school districts in our nation being referred to as dropout factories because their graduation rates are less than 55%, and less than 30% of those who graduate are even able to meet or exceed their state's expectations on standardized tests, something has to be done to change the current statistics. We owe that much to our children and grandchildren. That is where the idea of teacher merit pay comes in paying a good teacher for doing his or her job correctly and efficiently. Although there are a few areas that are currently using merit pay plans, the research on their effectiveness is limited. Evidence does suggest, however, that these plans that compensate teachers for their student achievement have led to improved student performance. In order for these plans to work effectively, they must be tailored to each individual situation. The possibility of financial rewards directly related to student achievement would motivate existing teachers to focus increased effort and innovation on student achievement. Merit pay programs would increase a more talented pool of candidates into teaching because those confident in their ability to thrive under a pay for performance arrangement would be more likely to enter the profession. The most effective teachers would consistently earn large bonuses, and ineffective teachers would earn smaller, if any bonus at all. Through a type of natural selection, the more competent teachers would remain, and the less effective teachers would leave to find better paying jobs. This would be especially beneficial in areas where there exist teacher shortages. The current system contains no compensation directly related to effectiveness, and often leads these teachers to look for those districts that compensate through better working condition, leaving the highly populated disadvantaged schools for those serving the more advantaged. 
The best and most effective may even turn to administrative positions or even leave education in search of higher pay. Yes, there is controversy surrounding the implementation of merit-based pay for teachers. Any suggested change brings with it some form of controversy. However, in the few areas of the United States that have agreed to pilot the merit pay plan, the teachers and students have noticed a successful difference in pay and standardized test scores. According to educational leadership, teachers use the results of the student pre-assessments to target instructional needs and plan their yearly lessons. These students showed gains of at least seven percentile points in mathematics and reading, while their counterparts, not included in the pilot program, actually showed a decrease in their test scores. Teachers in the pilot program had increased satisfaction with their salaries and no increase in feelings of negative competition or negative environment. These same teachers did not feel they had worked any harder or were any more innovative than the comparison teachers. They also felt that teaching the low-performing students was a positive opportunity to demonstrate their abilities. The increase in student performance and test scores is enough to indicate that teacher merit pay is the change that America needs to improve our educational program and gain our competitive edge against other nations. Thank you. Have a nice evening.